So in this video, we're going to discuss the model answers for question three on the specimen paper for exam one of the new AQA spec. So the first question is really another AO1 style question, and it's asking us to basically give the difference between two different measures of biodiversity. Now it tells us that these two different measures of biodiversity are species richness and the index of uh, diversity. So if we're going to do a comparison question or a contrasting question, there's a little bit of exam technique. First off, we need to be able to define species richness, and then we need to contrast that directly with the definition for index of diversity. And a good way to do that is to put the word but or whereas right in the middle of the sentence. So if we look at the uh, mark scheme answer, we can actually see that species richness is only a measure of the number of different species in a given area. However, or but, index of diversity is actually a measure of both the number of species in that given area, but also the number of individuals within each of the different species. So these are two different measures of diversity or biodiversity, and we need to make the comparison to get the mark. So we're now given some information about an investigation to look at the biodiversity of butterflies in a rainforest. And we're given some data within the table as well to look at the mean numbers of butterflies um, either in the canopy or in the understory. Now it actually tells us, we can take a highlighter pen um, about the differences between the canopy and the understory. So scientists set one canopy trap. So we can highlight that on the exam script and we can make some notes next to it. And that means a trap to basically trap different species of butterflies in the upper leaves of trees in a certain location. The next trap was actually set much further down in what we call the understory. And that's beneath the canopy of leaves of the trees. And it's nearer to the surface of the ground. And what they did was to have five different sites. So they would have taken the number of butterflies of a certain species in the canopy and they would have counted the numbers of those same species of butterflies um, in the understory trap and they've got five different sites so they can work out a mean for the numbers of each of the different species of butterflies then it tells us that the canopy traps were set among the leaves of the trees um, 16 to 27 meters above the ground so there is some variability uh, in terms of where the traps have been set in the upper canopy the lowest trap was 16 meters above the ground in the canopy and the highest trap in the canopy was set 27 meters above the ground so there's actually an 11 meter difference between the lowest and the highest traps in the leaves in the canopy it then tells us that the understory traps were set much nearer to the ground, but only 1 to 1 1.5 metres off the ground. So there's only a 0.5 metre or 50 centimetre difference between the lowest understory trap and the highest understory trap. Now the table shows us a number of things. It shows us the mean number of butterflies for each species in the canopy traps. So this is for all five traps and they've taken a mean. So we can just write here. Five times traps and they've taken a mean. Uh, and they've done the same for the understory. Again, what we have are the five times traps and they've taken a mean there as well. Now, if we look at the species name, we know it's the binomial Latin nomenclature. And there's two words that we're going to see within the name. The first word is actually the genus. So Propona is the genus for this first species of butterfly. Um, Lertes is then the species name. Um, and we can see there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six different species of butterfly that they've identified within the uh, different traps here. Now, from these uh, data values, we're going to be able to work out the index of diversity um, for the different species. And we can start to look at the biodiversity um, in the two different areas, the canopy and the understory. We've also got p-values on the right-hand side. Now, the test they would have conducted to look at 
whether or not the differences in the mean numbers of butterflies are significant or not would have been a t-test. So a t-test, you have two groups of data. Uh, you have mean values for each data set. So here it's the canopy versus the understory. And then we're going to look at are the differences significant or not. And this is all about the p-value that's generated. And we use 0.05 as our threshold level that we'll discuss in a minute. And we're going to see is the p-value higher than that or is it lower than that? So if it's a really, really low p-value under 0.05, such as 0.001, then we're going to say the differences are highly significant. So in question B, it says the traps in the canopy were set at 16 to 27 meters above ground level. Now, we know there's variation there between the 16 is the lowest value in the canopy for the trap and 27 meters is the highest value uh, for the trap in the canopy. Uh, and that's because we've got five different sites. And then it says suggest why there was such great variation in the height of these traps then in the canopy. Well, if we look at the Mark Seam answer, it's actually fairly simple. That at the five different sites, we're going to get possibly different species of trees that might grow to different heights. Or it's actually just sufficient to say the trees grow to varying heights. For example, more mature trees might grow slightly higher in one area or one site compared to a different site. And that will get us the one mark. Now, question C says, by how many times is the species diversity greater in the canopy? versus the species diversity in, in the understory and it says show you're working. So in the exams, you'll get this equation. It's called the index of diversity. Now you do need to practice this equation, but you don't need to actually learn it itself because it will be given. Now the top part of the equation is a uh, big N or uppercase N. And that shows the number, the total number of organisms of all the different species added together. So if you had six different species of butterfly and you added up the, the total numbers for each species, that would give you capital N. Now, lowercase n is slightly different. That's the total number of individuals or butterflies of each specific species. So we, uh, we can write out the equation first and then we can start to use it. So the top part of the equation is fairly easy to do. It's just the total number of individuals. Imagine that was a thousand times n minus 1, which would be 999. If you had, say, 100 individuals in total for all the species, it'd be 100 times 99. But the bottom part of our equation, where it's lowercase n, is slightly different. So, for example, if we had n1, that's the number of individuals in species 1, and imagine that was, say, 20. Now we go 20 times n minus 1, which is 19, so 20 times 19. And then we do the same for species 2. So imagine there were 15 individuals in species 2, so it'd be 15 times 14. We do the same for species 3. So if there was 11 individuals in species 3, it'd be 11 times 10. And then we add all these values together. So if we had six different species of butterfly, as we've got in this question, we're going to have six equations and six values that we're just going to add together. Because if we actually look at this symbol here in the equation, that's called sigma. And that means sum of or summation. So we add n times n minus 1 together for each of the different species that we've got. So if we now apply this equation to this particular question, and we're going to work out the index of diversity for the canopy to start with, as we can see here. So big N or uppercase N is 15 in species 1, plus 14 individuals in species 2, plus 25 in species 3, 89 individuals in species 4, 21 in species 5, and 32 in species six. And that gives us 186 individuals in total. So N times N minus one is 186 times 185 is 34,410. Now, if we do the same in a minute for the other area, which is the, the area lower down in the under uh, story, 
we're going to get a slightly different value. However, let's just finish this equation to start with. So lowercase n for species 1 is n times n minus 1. So it's 15 times 14 plus n times n minus 1 for species 2. So there's 14 individuals in species 2. So it's 14 times 13 plus 25 individuals in species 3. So it's 25 times 24. In species 4, there's 89 individuals, so it's 89 times 88. Species 5, there's 21 individuals, so it's 21 times 20. Species 6, there's 32 individuals, so it's 32 times 21. And we add all those six numbers together to get 9,244. Now we can work out index of diversity for the canopy by doing a simple equation, 34,410 divided by... 9,244 gives us a value of 3.72 to three significant figures. Now we need to use this equation again and do exactly the same type of uh, sum, but this time for the understory. So big N is zero because there's no individuals of butterfly species one, plus 37 individuals in species two, 11 species 3, 23 species 4, 3 species 5, and 8 individuals of species 6. That gives us 82. So n times n minus 1 for the total number of individuals is 6,642. If we do the bottom part of our equation now, we do this for each of the six species. So it's 0 times 0 minus 1 will just give us 0. For species 1. Species 2 is 37 times 36. Species 3 is 11 times 10. Species 4, 23 times 22. Species 5, 3 times 2. And species 6, 8 times 7. That's 2010. So if we divide 6,642 by 2010, we get the index of diversity for the understory. Now the question says we need how many times bigger is the canopy diversity compared to the understory diversity. So we take the index of diversity for the canopy 3.72 divide it by the index of diversity for the understory 3.3 and we get our answer times 1.13 and that's to three significant figures. Now, question D says the scientists carried out a statistical test to see if the difference in the distribution of each species between the canopy, data set one, and the understory, data set two, was due to chance. So we're going to highlight part of the question. So that st statistical test we know is a t-test, and that allows us to compare two mean values from two data sets to see if they're significantly different or not. And we're looking at the difference in distribution between the canopy and the understory. And we want to see, is that due to chance? Now the p-value is already given and worked out and they're in the table. So you can go back in the video and look at the p-values if you wish to start with and then kind of formulate an answer. And the question says, explain what the results in the table show us. So the first mark point we're going to look at there the species Ceritis itius uh, of butterfly. Here, the difference in distribution, i.e. the mean number of butterflies between the two habitats, i.e. in the canopy versus in the understory, is due to chance. So it's not significant. So there's no significant difference between the two mean values. And this is because the p-value is greater than 0.05 which we know indicates that there's no significant difference between the two mean values. Now, the second mark point is if we look at all the other species in the table, the p-values are actually below 0.001. Now, if the p-value is much lower or, or below 0.05, that tells us that there's actually a much lower 
chance that the differences are not significant and therefore a very very high probability statistically that the differences in the two mean values are significant so the lower the p-value below 0 0.05 that's a five percent threshold the more highly significant the differences between the two mean values of our two data sets so it's important to express in your mark scheme answer or your model answer that because they're less than 0 0.001 which is less than one or 0.1 percent they are highly significant differences in the distribution between uh, the two habitats one in the canopy and one in the understory And it's very, very important to say, and the mark point here, the third mark point, if you're saying the p-value is much lower than 5%, so it's actually less than 0 0.001 in the table. Now, just one last point for reference then. When we're talking about p-values uh, in relation to this last point here, if the probability of a difference being not significant or non-significant is less than 1%, for example, that's 0 0.01. That's less than 5% threshold, 0 0.05. And that means that the probability of a significant difference is actually greater than 99%. So the small value, the p-value, 0 0.01, for example, represents 1% probability that the differences are not significant, which means the converse 99% probability that the differences are significant. So at the 5% level, the 0 0.05 value, that actually represents 95% probability that the differences between the two means are significantly different and 5% probability that the differences between the two means are not significantly different. But that is not enough to give us our significant difference. Our value, p-value, has to be below 5%. So 1% would be 0 0.01. 0.1% would be 0 0.001, which is much more highly significant. So that would be 0.1% that the differences between the two means are not significant, and 99.9% .9 that they are highly, very highly significant differences.